Hi guys, it's Hazel here at The Right Coffee Girl and this week I want to talk to you about boundaries and how important they are in business and exactly how you can use them to rule your tribe like an empress. As entrepreneurs we all have to deal with clients, customers and other business owners. Now in order to ensure your success, your work-life balance and your sanity, it is really really important that you have clear boundaries in place when it comes to interacting with them and dealing with their requests. It's absolutely vital that you establish clear boundaries and also enforce them. Where exactly are the lines in your business? What are you happy to do? What makes you uncomfortable? Now like most entrepreneurs when I started out in business I really didn't have any boundaries at all. I took on any and all work, no matter what it was, because um, I was just focusing on bringing in some money and I wasn't that particular about where it came from. And a lot of the stuff that I ended up doing was really quite soul destroying work. I put up with a lot of crap from customers in terms of um, what they expected from me. Uh, what they were willing to pay me for my time and also whether or not they were actually willing to pay me at all. In the early days it was really common for me to have emails to deal with at all hours of the day and night. I had texts coming in late at night, I had people calling me and texting me when they knew full well that I was on holiday and wasn't working um, and I never, I never actually told them that that wasn't okay, I never actually did anything to stop that, I just quietly brooded and felt worse and worse about it until finally it drove me a little bit mad. But Facebook is another good example. Uh, every time I logged onto Facebook I, I had to deal with a tsunami of messages um, from people asking me for things, uh, so things that sort of spilled over that they, they couldn't be bothered emailing me about so they sent it on Facebook instead. People that I knew from my business networks that knew what I did but didn't necessarily want to hire me would just randomly ask me for advice uh, all on Facebook. So my, my private Facebook profile, they say, it's not my business's Facebook page, but my private Facebook profile became an absolute nightmare. I couldn't talk to my friends on it because there was too much work going on for me to ever actually see what my friends were doing. Um, and going on it stopped being, you know, sort of something that I did for fun to, to catch up with people and it started being just another aspect of work um, and that was really, really draining. You name it, I had to deal with it. Um, and that, that's just the realities of being an entrepreneur. I think everybody has to deal with this sort of thing at some point or another. Um, and if you don't have to deal with a lot, um, it, that's actually very lucky for you. Because I think for most people, certainly most people that I know, um, it's a, an issue that, like me, they struggle with an awful lot, um, especially initially. But in the last year, I've really, really tightened up um, on my boundaries and what I'm willing to let people get away with and where I draw the lines and say, hang about, no. Not on. <laughs> so this includes some um, really practical lines, um, like um, having payment terms in place that everybody has to sign before I start working for them, um, having a clear limit on the amount of email support that certain clients get, rewrite limits, so very very clear guidelines on what is an acceptable amount to expect me to rewrite and what I will have to charge additional money for. Uh, another one that I have is no Skype, I do not do Skype which surprises a lot of people because I'm quite happy doing videos <laughs> um, and it's got absolutely nothing to do with me uh, being seen on camera I just, I have a personal issue with Skype that I just really don't like it, it makes me very uncomfortable Everybody I work with signs either terms or conditions or a contract depending on the nature of the work um, that I'm doing for them and if they don't pay, I don't work <laughs> So, um, gone are the days when I would happily keep working for people even when they hadn't paid me uh, on the promise that payment was coming at some point. Um, I, uh, I have a lot of clients on sort of monthly retainers who pay me a set amount monthly and if they don't make their payments, uh, even if there's a perfectly understandable reason for them not making their payments um, and I'm totally fine with them, you know, holding off for a month or whatever, um, I, I don't do any other work in the interim until they've, they've, they've made the payment and they've caught up and they're actually back on track with the payments. Um, and that felt, actually, that was the one thing that felt to me like an unreasonable thing for me to expect, that I should expect people to pay me on time. Um, and I had a really, really bad block, <laughs> a really, really bad money block with that, um, where it, it took quite a lot for me to figure out that actually people do need to pay on time, and if they don't pay on time, whatever work you're doing for them has to pause until they have paid. 
Now for the most part when it comes to enforcing boundaries in your business people are very understanding, very accepting and they don't even bat an eyelid. You let them know what the terms of working for you are and they simply accept that, that those are the terms under which they can work with you. Um, and the majority of people, if they're not happy with what you've said for, for any reason, they don't really kick up a fuss about it. They, you know, it, As long as you're clear with them at the outset they'll simply say, oh well that's not how I like to work, I'm looking for somebody that does it a little differently. And that's the end of it. You know, they move on, you move on, and nobody comes to any harm over it. Every business has expectations uh, in terms of what the client can do, what the business can do. Every business has do's and don'ts. Every business has, or should have, um, boundaries. I think people get really, really worried when it comes to enforcing boundaries because they're convinced that they, they're going to lose all their clients and they're not going to be able to get any more business in. But um, from my personal experience and also you know, from, from talking to other entrepreneurs and business owners, their, their own experiences when they've had to do similar things is that the majority of people will be perfectly fine with it and the few who aren't, you are better off without. And it's not going to kill you to replace them and get new people in who are happy to work with you on your terms. So getting rid of clients who are difficult to work with, even if you really, really love them, um, it, it's, it's quite an upsetting process, but at the end of it, you find that your life is a lot less stressful for not having to deal with them anymore and, they're, and not having to contend with their unrealistic expectations. I, I also personally found that my, uh, my profits actually shut up as a result of, of enforcing boundaries and kind of, and, and getting rid of uh, difficult clients. For two reasons. One, I made sure that everybody was on my current um, pay scale. So I, I put my prices up uh, um, at a point last year um, and a lot of people who were already working with me at the time that I put the prices up, I didn't actually put them up to the new prices. I kept them at the prices that they signed on for and I restarted having the new prices applied to new clients. Um, and at the beginning of this year, um, I put everybody up to the new pricing scheme, including all of my existing clients. The best benefit of enforcing boundaries, though, is time management and how much better I've got at managing my time since I've put boundaries into place in my business. Now, that doesn't mean that now that I have boundaries in place, nobody ever pushes them. <laughs> but there are still times when I get the odd raiding party crossing the border, smacking me upside the head with a cue stick and running off doing a victory dance. Um, People naturally, I think, push their boundaries, um, partly because it's human nature to always want to, to, you know, kind of see how far you can actually go with something, and also partly because um, a lot of the time they don't actually realise that they are stepping over the boundary. So you may have told them that there is a boundary in place, but until they actually step over it, um, yeah, they might not realise that a particular action or, or request or something is, is actually um, more than they should be asking for. So normally when that happens, a polite reminder is all it takes to get them back over that boundary and, and ensure that they don't step over it again, because once they realise um, that it's not acceptable for them to do a certain thing, they don't do it again. There are also always going to be times when you get requests from people that are just not reasonable. So despite my wonderful new boundaries that I have in place, I still get people asking me things um, that, that are for me over the line. Can you write my thesis for me? No, I can't. I can't actually afford to pay you, but uh, working for me for free will be great for your business. It'll really raise your profile and you'll make loads of new clients. No. And my personal favourite, and the inspiration for the title of this particular post. So uh, I need you to test drive our new butt plug. Uh, I think first hand experience is, is going to uh, really add authenticity to the piece. So I've chosen those three particular examples for a reason, because each one exemplifies one of the main things that you will have to deal with when it comes to trying to run your business like a boss. Or as I prefer to think of it, when it comes to ruling your tribe like an empress. The first one is having a code. Um, so in my first example, um, you know, I, I mentioned that I occasionally get people asking me to write, uh, write their own work for them. Um, now, this is an example from my business, so it might not apply to you directly. Um, but for me, I do a lot of work as a ghostwriter wherein I 
allow people to put their own name on my words as if they were their own and I'm perfectly happy with that arrangement, I have no issue with it, you know, if you need a ghostwriter, there are many reasons why you would need a ghostwriter, um, and I'm more than happy to let clients take the credit for my work, essentially, but there are certain situations when I'm not okay with that, um, the best example I can think of is when it comes to academic work, and you have a student approach you and say, um, can you write my thesis for me? Uh, you know, can you write an essay on this for me? And it is blindingly obvious that they want you to do it so that they can hand it in at university as their own work. That conflicts quite severely with my moral code. <laughs> the concept of knowingly writing somebody else's work for them and allowing them to hand it in so that they could gain their degree um, off the back of, of work that was not their own, that does not sit with me well at all, morally. I have, I have a real ethical issue with that um, and that's one of my lines that I just don't cross. Now whether you are Dexter Morgan, Jack Sparrow or Barney Stinson, you need a code. So a code is essentially just a set of guiding principles. Um, now your niche may have specific ethics related to it, so um, for example um, the legal profession has, has ethical uh, um, issues, uh, medical professions have ethical issues. Depending on what your niche is, there may be certain things that from an ethical perspective you are legally bound to have particular rules in place. But in addition to that, there are always going to be certain practices that you personally have um, have an issue with. So things that you can legally do, and you can legally do as part of your business, but that you personally just get the ick doing it, and you don't like doing it. So this is the first boundary that you have to put in place. You have to have a code, you have to explain it, and you have to enforce it. Now the second boundary that you really, really need to get in place is related to respect. Your time and expertise are valuable. You are running a business, you are not running a charity, although you may have charitable elements to your business, um, but you still need to get paid for your time and your work. Now you might decide to have certain things that you make available for free, so you might do pro bono work for example, uh, or it might simply be that you offer um, you know, sort of freebies, um, opt-in freebies, you know, free um, worksheets and downloads and uh, videos and you know, all your content is free, so there, are, there will be elements to your business that you are making freely available, but um, they are elements that you have decided ahead of time you are going to create and make available for free as part of your overall business strategy and you're happy with that. So for example I have all my content is available for free, I have a blog and a blog with lots of free content on it, I have opt-in freebies that are all available for free and in addition to that I give all new clients the option of having a completely free blog post to try out my service. So that service is worth £55 and you get it totally free as a way of sort of trying before you buy because I believe that the particular service that I offer it can be very difficult to actually make that leap of faith and trust a writer to write for you. You don't know what their writing is going to be like, you don't know how well you're going to work together, you're not sure whether it's going to be worth the money. There are various questions that um, potential clients have that really can't be answered by me reassuring them about things uh, and it's a lot easier for them and for me for me to just show them what I can do for them and let them decide for themselves. So I, I quite happily work for free in the sense that I will do one piece it for free to let people see how I work um, but there are always going to be people who go beyond that and they'll just come to me right off the bat and say well um, I can't afford to pay you um, to, to, to do my blog for me but um, if you do my blog for me you know there are, there are loads of you know great benefits for you and your business you know it'll raise your profile uh, you'll meet loads of new clients you'll get loads of new business and um, you know my business is really going places and you know if you get on board now you know I'll be able to pay for you you know you, I'll be able to pay you in the future um, once everything's taken off and if you help me get there then that'll be great for you and it's all this pattern and it sounds quite good actually when they pitch it to you. Uh, you'll be amazed at how well people can make working for, for them for free sound good um, because they'll, they'll throw things at you, they'll throw statistics at you and they'll throw numbers at you and they'll throw promises of future payment at you, promises of you know all of their clients turning into your clients and all these different things that they, they offer and that they are empty promises because they have no way of guaranteeing that what they're saying will ever come to pass. But you, you really need to be very, very clear on what you will willingly do for free and what you require payment for. And this can be as simple as people uh, emailing you or messaging you asking for advice on a particular subject. And you might happily give them a little bit of advice 
um, maybe because you think they might potentially be a client and you want to let them know how, how helpful you can be or maybe because they're a friend and they need help but there always has to come a point when you say well actually um, I don't have time to actually answer that right now but if you go and check out this blog post or this video or this you know, free ebook that I've created it'll answer all your questions so you need to be able to sort of point people to places where they can find the information that they want or say to them um, that's actually you know uh, part of my service that I offer part of a product that I offer so go and check that out here and you'll get that there um, and people will do one of two things when you say that to them they will either happily run off and read the free thing that you've, you've told them about or buy the product or service that you've told them about or they'll get annoyed at you for expecting them to actually go and find the information themselves or pay for the information rather than you just giving it to them for free and that I think is a very good barometer for telling whether somebody is a good person to work with or not if they're quite willing to go and read something that you've told them about or buy something that you've told them about so that they can get what they're asking for um, then they're usually going to turn out to be a good client if they, if they kick up a fuss at that point and expect you to just tell them something that you've already said somewhere else and that they could just go and look at then that's usually a good indication that they're not going to respect your boundaries, they're not going to respect your time, they're not going to respect your value and that generally they're just never going to be a good client. <laughs> now if you want more great great information on why you really shouldn't barter for your time you should definitely check out um, Denise Stuffield Thomas's uh, video on why you should stop bartering, I'll post a link to that below, it's a, it's a brilliant explanation of this. And the last thing that you have to have really really clear boundaries in place for is your comfort zone. Now it can be a good thing to step out of your comfort zone occasionally, um, it, you know, it pushes you, it encourages you to grow and learn new things, um, but when you do it really should be your decision. You should be deciding to step out of your comfort zone and try something new. It shouldn't be that a client or a potential client or, you know, just, just a member of your tribe who follows you has put you in a position where you are outside your comfort zone, not by choice, but because they have put you there. So there are always going to be certain things that you're not comfortable with doing, whether it's um, doing a service in a particular way, offering particular products, um, or even just communicating with people in a particular way. So I mentioned before I don't do Skype, that is well outside my comfort zone and I'm not happy with it. Uh, so that is one of my boundaries. Um, but there, there will also be things where um, clients will ask you to do things that are perfectly reasonable, they're, like, they're not actually an unreasonable request, but for you personally, they're just not something that you're comfortable doing. So I have one client who runs a, a sex toy site. They sell a, a wide range of different types of sex toys and I write their blog posts for them. And that particular client always asks me for ridiculously fun posts. So um, the differences between realistic and technical dildos, the wonder of breasts and how best to display and or stimulate them, and most recently, an awful lot about butt plugs. I've always been totally fine writing for them, I, I've never had an issue with it, um, up to a point. <laughs> they hit that point last week. But when they did, it wasn't an issue, okay? I, I pointed out the line in the sand and said, I'm quite happy writing for you, up to a point, and this is that point. And they said, oh, that's fine, nothing to worry about. And the suggestion was that I actually try it myself, um, just to add that kind of authentic note to the piece because they thought that, you know, sort of a first person perspective would, would make the piece really authentic and, and really good. Now, I have to admit, I have no problem with sex toys. I've got a drawer full of them, I'm quite happy with them. But there is a world, there is a world of difference between um, being comfortable with something in your private life and being comfortable with it in your professional life. It would be a totally different thing if I was writing a piece in my own name about my own personal experiences and talking about things that had to do with sex then. I haven't really done it very often, but I have done it on occasion, and if the, if, if the occasion merits it, if there's really a good reason for it, I'm not adverse to it, it doesn't really bother me. But there is a huge difference between being comfortable discussing your own sexual experiences as yourself and giving your sexual experiences to somebody else to pass off as their own. And for me, that was just a bit awkward. I didn't really like it. Um, so, so yeah, there will always be things when people will ask you to do something, which for some people might be perfectly acceptable. So I'm sure, you know, there are there are writers out there who would quite happily, you know, do that, and it wouldn't bother them. But for me, I wasn't comfortable with it. 
it really wasn't a big deal. You just need to make people aware of where the lines are and when they've stepped over them so that they can rein themselves back in and they know not to cross that particular line again. That's all it takes. Now, the reason I refer to these things as ruling like an empress is because the, the, there are three very fundamental things that an empress simply does not do. So, for example, an empress does not, or rather should not, break the law, which is where your code comes in. An empress always commands respect, and an empress never demeans herself, okay? So, these are the, these are the three kind of core things that you have to keep in mind when it comes to boundaries in your business. Have a code. And stick to it. Be respectful of your clients and expect them to respect you in return and never do anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. That's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit subscribe now so you don't miss any in future. You can also like and share it around so that other people can watch it and do please comment below and let me know what your boundaries are in your business and whether or not you are successful at enforcing them. See you soon. Bye.